Hello and welcome back to Shapes.io. Today's tutorial will be all about wireless smart machines, meaning they work in the standalone version. I'll be explaining how they work and I'll be showing you some designs, so that should help you if you want to build an anything machine for free play. So let's get to it. First, let's talk about the logic behind smart systems. The one concept that all smart systems use is the priority output of the storages. Now in the alpha, it has this symbol. This shows that the storages have priority output on the left side. Uh, and the standalone, this symbol isn't there, but they function the exact same way. So let's say we have this extractor inputting to the storage. We take two belts on both outputs. So as you see, if we input into it, the storage will always try to output on the left side until this line backs up. If it cannot, if it can no longer output on the left side, then only it will output on the right side. And we can use this as sort of an overflow gate. And this is the basic of the, this is the basis of the logic behind any smart system. Now let's get on to the building. So if you want to make an anything machine, you don't actually necessarily need a smart color mixer because instead of having a smart mixer, you can just make all of the seven colors. Well, the primary colors, you can just input raw, but it, a smart color mixer will be more space efficient because to make the three secondary colors and white, you will need one uh, color mixing array for the three secondary colors and two more for white, meaning five in total. But if you have a smart color mixer, all you need is two in total. But for, this, for the uh, stackers, it's a different story. So let's say I, I'll make this, I'll show this shape right here. So let's say we want to make this shape with our anything machine. I'll display this, right? So we get, we have a quad cutter here. Let's input into this, four lines for each corner. So the way an anything machine works is you have each corner as an input line, and you also select the color per each corner, right? So if we had a normal stacker, right? And we chain them like this, this works all fine, right? You have your squares, but to make this shape, we don't want the top left corner. But the problem with a st this uh, stacking system with no uh, logic behind it, is that if we remove this top left, the stacker system will now get backed up and this shape cannot be produced anymore. However, if we use a smart system, which I'll demonstrate right now, which would look something like this. This is just a very simplified version. So this, the way this works is that it will try to output into this stacker, but since this stacker is not getting the second input, this will actually back up, and then since it, and then this storage will let it overflow into the next one. So if we just merge this, now this is a very simplified version, but as you see, this will st can actually produce this shape because even when this is backed up, it will just overflow. And now if we want this shape again, this will all work. Uh, it is overflowing right now because Normally, you would need a, uh, a stacker array that can handle a full belt. But as you can see, we are getting full squares. So that's the basics of a smart stacker. And uh, you also need a smart painter too, but that's very easy to do. I'll show you that later. All right, so now let's build this thing. First, we'll start off with an array of color mixtures. Now, this has to be enough to handle a full belt so right now we need five because color mixers uh, can do six a second and belts are 30, meaning you need five. In the standalone, since things aren't actually, like there's a bunch of rounding errors and stuff, you actually might want to go with six because, just to be safe, because if your machine can't handle a full belt, it will break. So let's just make one module, then we'll copy and paste it. Perfect. And delete these. This is a basic color mixing module. And since we want to make white also, we want to have the ability to make white, we want a second one over here. So now for the logic part. So we take one input. This will be right here. We can take a second one. So if it wants to input like normally, we want to input into the left side, right? Because that's the first one it will try to input into. But then for the overflow, we want something like this, where actually, yeah, we want something like this, where if either of these overflow, 
that means it's missing one. So we can just combine these actually. And then we want to also combine the output because if this is outputting, that means neither of these are overflowing. So we know that only one color will be outputting at a time. So now what we do, actually, I want to make this face down. There we go. Now we do, we copy this exact same setup. We can actually just copy and paste this. And now we put the first smart machine into the second one. So how this works is that, let's say this is red and this is blue, right? So if just red is inputted, this will back up into the color mixers and it will overflow into this next one. Then it will try to be input to this next set of color mixers. And if it still can't be out inputted, then it will overflow once again and just be outputted into this output line. But if let's say we had red and this is green, right? First, this will be inputted. It will overflow because it backs up. It will go into the next one. But since green is also being inputted, this color mixing away will handle can handle a full belt, meaning none of these, the red or the green, none of them will actually overflow. So you'll have a solid line of yellow. So I'll just show this right now. So let's hook some colors up into this. So we got red. We got some green over here. And how I think we'll trash this output line. And finally for blue. So blue over here. Let's just route this. This into there. This into there. And this into here. Also, the way I'm doing this with the belt planner is you just hold shift when placing belts. And you can plan belts like that. So first, whoops, you hook this in. Let's say we just want red. So we hook this in. It backs up. This then overflows. It tries to the next one. It backs up again. And now we have red. Let's say we want red and green though. You can see this will, hand, this, since this can handle a full belt, this will no longer overflow. And now we have a contrast trim with yellow. Now for the smart systems, since we don't have like filters or anything that are only in the alpha, if you cut off a line like this, you will see that there is backup. And if we cut off this, there will be backup. So let's say we want just blue, right? First, it will start outputting purple. That's just to clear the backup. But then after it clears up, now we just get blue. So now for all three colors, as you may expect, none of these storages will back up because they're all being used by the color mixers. And once this clears out, now we have white. So that's the basics of a color mixer. And you can see it's way more compact than if we wanted to make every color instead, we would need like one, two, three, and, and then we'd need, so that's for the secondary colors, and we need two more to make white. That's if you want to make every color, but a smart machine will be much more compact. So next for the smart stackers, as you can see, I have the exact same design, but all I've done is replaced the color mixers with stackers. And I've also added a few more to the end because you do need more stackers than color mixers to handle a full belt. Now, if you want a full layer of shapes, you need four corners, meaning you need three stacking arrays. So that's pretty simple. We just copy and paste one module and we put the output of the second one into the input of the third one. And now this should be able to handle a full layer. Now, if you want a full shape, meaning four layers, you need four smart stacking systems and then plus a fifth one to stack the layers together. And a quick side note, this output line can never be backed up. You can never have any delay because if this backs up, it will cause these stackers to back up, meaning this storages will start to overflow and you'll get some miscellaneous shapes. So a way to prevent that is to have a setup like this where you have the main output line and you can just trash everything else. So I have this quad cutter set up over here. This should output four lines of four lines of corners. Let's just connect them in. So remember that with with uh, cutters, if any of the in, if any of the outputs are backed up, the entire cutter won't work. So you will need to trash the outputs that aren't being used. So let's say we just want the top left. We trash everything else and input top left. As you can see, it tries to stack. It backs up, overflows to the next one, and overflows a second time, then overflows a third time, and finally it just outputs like normal. 
But what if we want the top left and bottom right? So we take these two. Now we can input them in. As you can see, if we let it clear up a bit, once this uh, settles up, settles down, it will, st it will stop overflowing. And now you just have a full line of these top left and bottom right shapes. So what if we want three? Well, that's simple. We just, let's say we want the top right corner too. Let's hook this in. And you see, this will slowly start stop to overflow, and then it will start stacking into the smart, this stacking array. Now we have these three quarters of a circle. And finally, if we want the full circle, we just input this in. And now this will slowly, slowly stop to overflow, and this should make a full belt of circles. However, the alpha is having, there are, I have found some issues in the alpha, where storages have some interesting behavior. So in the standalone, this should work just fine, but just take my word for it. But as you can see, maybe we can try a, if we cut the inputs off for a bit, let it drain out maybe. If we let it empty out and then re-input them, hopefully it will work. As you see, we start, we start to get the full circles. Okay, there is still some issues, but just uh, in the standalone, it should work. Just assume it will work. Now, the final piece to an anything machine is a smart painter. Now, this is often forgotten because it's a very simple thing, but you still need it nonetheless. So, we have our painter here, right? Let's say we input some squares and we want to paint them blue. This all works fine, right? But Let's say we have an uncolored corner. So as you see, if we just if I start just advancing some levels, you'll see there are uncolored there are uncolored corners in free play. So if if we just remove the paint, obviously this won't work. It won't paint anything. But we can just simply use this storage bypass and we could just uh, take an output like this. And now we can just get uncolored like this, where if there is no paint, so if there is paint, it works fine. This will no longer output once this drains out. So the storage did fill up a bit, but actually I'll just replace the storage. That's probably the easiest way. So we just have constant blue squares. If we want it uncolored, we remove the paint and it just bypasses the painter. And that's how you make a smart painter. It's pretty simple, but you still do need it for uncolored shapes. So that'll be all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this helps you if you plan to make an anything machine. Now, obviously in the standalone, you will have to manually input each corner shape and color because there are no wires, but using these concepts and designs, you should have the knowledge required to make an anything machine if you plan to do so. So subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you next time. Later.